I advocate the use of threaded discussion forums for in engagement with other uh, course participants, both the instructor as well as the other student learners. It provides me with the, with the opportunity to have students discuss a topic over an extended period of time. Uh, one of the oldest learning principles is that time on task equals learning. And so when you have a classroom discussion that lasts 50 minutes, that's limited time with a limited number of participants. It's a challenge for the facilitator of that environment to limit the participation of some and encourage the participation of others. Online, that problem is equalized because everybody has a chance to participate. It's a two-week time period where you log on and participate really at times when the learner chooses to. It's convenient for them that when they're at in the mood to do that and so you're not really fighting you know I have to be there at nine o'clock and I don't really want to be and so forth uh, it makes it a more conducive general learning environment because the students are learning in when it's convenient for them and they want to participate and in the threaded discussion uh, as long as it has been developed according to a, uh, a set of best practices uh, students will generally find that it's the that's, that's the learning activity through which they acquire most of their information. It allows them to construct new information based upon the foundation of the knowledge that they already have so that they can achieve an assimilation or an accommodation of the new knowledge, make it meaningful, apply it to their own uh, set of experiences. And uh, we found that the real secret to student learning is paying attention and focused attention to the content and finding meaning in the content. And that really requires uh, a sense of ownership and uh, autonomy and, and personal responsibility with the learning process itself. You give them the opportunity to do that by providing them uh, options, for example, of what topics they choose to discuss. Uh, in a lot of our courses, we have students ask the discussion questions rather than respond to the instructor's discussion questions. When it comes time to doing uh, research on an issue, uh, rather than providing them with a list of options or, or assigning them a topic, ask them to find the topic that interests them the most and that they would most like to teach to the other students and let them choose that topic and explore that in depth and then report on that. A good discussion question. Um, is kind, some of it's just sort of um, a given. You don't ask a yes-no question because that goes nowhere. Um, and it's not a factual question. It's not a question that has a right or wrong answer. And so sometimes in the more technical disciplines, it's hard for faculty to see at first um, that you could have a discussion on math or, <laughs> or computer programming. Um, but uh, when you talk to them about what is an objective of your course that we could um, ask a question about, that is something that's a maybe a controversial subject in your in your discipline and what do you want them to know about that that's how you ask the question one of the secrets to uh, creating an effective attention retaining discussion is to eliminate the sense that it's a waste of time or to eliminate the belief that it's just uh, talking or chatting rather than actually discourse for the purpose of teaching and learning. Discussion questions in my class come in many forms. Um, initially I start out with some instructor-led questions with some options um, and one half of the, the, I have two types of questions, two types of discussion forums in my class. One of them is instructor-led and it has some base things that I want them to discuss. Um, that, are, that are connected tangentially to, the, technology, to the, the class content at the time. But then I also have a, a discussion forum specifically about current events, um, which is wide open. And I ask them to bring something of, from their experiences that's current to the class. Uh, because it's in the class is in computer forensics, um, what happened two, three years ago is no more is very, very irrelevant almost at this point because the, the techniques that were used then to um, to provide security 
uh, for technology and, and things like that um, are entirely different. Uh, the computers have changed, the technology has changed, uh, laptop and mobile have changed. So I asked them to bring something that happened in the last nine months or, or less. Um, but, and usually it's stuff that happened yesterday. They, they're bringing back articles. So they have to go out to a peer-reviewed type uh, uh, article or place, um, either uh, say CNN or um, um, some, some other uh, peer-reviewed location um, where they can bring an article to bear. And then they have some specific questions to answer around that, um, that, they, that they, they, they do a little in-depth look at that article and then post that in for the entire class. So the class gets that uh, to see some of the other's um, uh, interests as well as things uh, that are interests that are surrounded in the, the area of computer forensics. Um, so I use uh, them in two different ways in the class. Um, mainly for, because it is a 100 level class, um, uh, those are the two methods that I use uh, at this point. Um, in terms of grading, um, I grade them. Uh, I grade them more um, holistically, like whether or not they've done it or not. Um, I have a framework around which that I expect, my expectations. Um, and I provide that framework for them at the very beginning and I actually have a link to that framework in every discussion forum that there is there because I want them to know what my expectations are and then continue to tell them about the expectations. Um, uh, but it's more of a did you do it or not. Um, we don't usually in, the, in a traditional classroom grade a student on, their, um, on, on the quality necessarily of their interaction. So I kind of personally I'm not so f fond of, uh, I like to keep things consistent with online and traditional classrooms. And I don't, I don't have a grading system for students interaction in my course. I determine whether or not they do participate, but I don't necessarily determine how, to what degree they participate. Um, I want them to participate and so I grade them on that. It's more so it's more of a have they or have they not met the expectations of the level of participation, but not necessarily quality. Um, so, and that's partially because every student has, comes from a different background and if that person started the class knowing nothing about it, about the topic, I, I don't want to, them to be hindered in terms of quality because, versus someone who was an expert and just didn't have the, the credential. So I don't really get into so much the quality. Um, but did the student go out to a peer-reviewed article, grab the information, summarize it, provide the insights as to how it would impact um, other individuals? You know, how can they protect themselves against such an intrusion, as an example? Um, how can they protect their families? Um, what information could they provide to others? If you can show students good, interesting, engaging content, then when you ask them to go get the content and share it, they will go look for engaging and interesting content. So, for example, uh, I did discussions which I tried to make fairly open-ended and current event oriented, and one of them was on uh, geology, and it actually had more to do with planetary formation, but one of the kids uh, posted up a video of somebody throwing a bag of trash into an active volcano. And I was able to spin that out into a uh, larger story about combustion and how this stuff breaks down and what you expected versus what you saw. And I think it was really just that concrete realization that there is a student passion for this stuff if you can be passionate about it. If nothing else, students who are highly introverted. I mean, we've been struggling for years with, you know, students who just need more time to stop and think and put their uh, thoughts together or who are anxious in social situations. Um, this, is, this is a great time for them to shine. It's a new way that they can jump in and be just as active as another student who's got a much more impulsive and reactive personality. The online class is really an active environment. Um, 
I think I know my online students better than I know classroom students because there's no hiding in the back row, sitting there for 15 weeks and not saying anything. You have to be a participant in the learning. And it's not just um, collaborating or communicating with me, it's with each other. I want them to learn from each other because I don't know everything and nobody knows any everything. And um, I encourage them to, um, to work together. Uh. We talk a lot in, in the instructional design profession of creating teaching presence in a course. And it's my belief that it's the learners that can actually take responsibility for creating that teaching presence. So one of the best practices that I insist upon is that whenever a student submits a post to a discussion forum, that post has to teach something. And to introduce that post, I want students to create a little abstract of the, of the point that they're trying to teach and present that abstract as an advanced organizer in the form of the subject or the post title. And so getting students to adopt that practice where they have to think about what it is their main point is and summarize that into a single complete sentence, that gives them uh, the necessity really of solidifying and the salient point of their post but it also provides this advanced organizational learning device for the learners, for the other students in the class, so that they know in advance, before reading the message, what they are supposed to extract in terms of meaning from that message. You're not going to pass this course if you ignore the discussions. And I have many places in the course, discussion online is not the same as discussion on campus. In an on-campus course, students often try to divert the teacher into a discussion to avoid something or they you know they just find it amusing that they can divert this, the instructor and um, so they have this kind of um, strange idea of what discussion means but they eventually they get it in my class or they don't pass as you said they don't pass because it's worth a lot I learned so much about what my students know I, I know way more about what my students are learning as individuals than I do in my on-campus classes because so many of them on, uh, on campus in face-to-face -face classes won't talk in the class. They sit and nod or, you know, yeah, that's what I thought. I'm like, really, that's kind of bogus. <laughs> Did you even read the story? <laughs> so uh, I, I just enjoy that so much more than uh, that aspect in face-to-face. -face. You can't really grade it face-to-face. -face. What you come away with at the end of a class is who talked the most, not who said anything important. Um, but online there's a record and you, get to, you can go back and look at it if you want to. I really couldn't do it in the classroom. In the classroom I was an actor. I would be standing on the desk and demonstrating gravity to them and thinking that I was very effective. Little did I know that half the time they weren't paying any attention to me whatsoever. Uh, I had trouble stepping out of, the, out of the limelight. Online, that was a natural for me to find the inner strength to shut up and let them learn. 